Hello and welcome to my presentation on democratizing design through surrogate model convolutional neural networks of computer-aided design repositories. My name is Dr. James Gopsell and I'm a research fellow for the Centre for Modelling and Simulation and University of Bristol. Uh, the background of this research comes about where we, were be, we have been examining the presumption society where individuals are both producers and consumers of goods and services. This future is seen to be empowered by 3D printing, uh, which is now growing in its capability in, to be able to produce all manner of parts and components. Alongside this is the rise of content creators with model repositories such as GrabCAD and Fingerverse containing over 4 million and 1.6 million models respectively for you know, society to be able to download and print and use for their own applications. But to be able to you know, use, use these model repositories, we asked ourselves, how can non-experts search and retrieve across these CAD model repositories, given that they might not be able to have the you know, engineering te uh, terminology and vocabulary to be able to search and retrieve based on the features within these CAD models? So the idea was to use the rendering tools in CAD to train a convolutional neural network. Um, and we call this training on a surrogate model because it's actually all out of uh, manufactured out of fake data through the CAD rendering toolbox. So we were rendering CAD models in six degree increments uh, to create a full like perspective mo uh, image of, of that CAD model. The idea is that once the CNN was trained, that a user would then be able to take real world photos of objects and the CNN match that up to the nearest or closest match of the CAD model in the repository and then they would be able to just simply download that model and 3D print it entirely democratizing that design and manufacturer process. So to test this out we selected a set of grab, uh, models from GrabCAD and used Blender to render them um, in all their different perspectives. We then took five off the shelf we claim like CNNs AlexNet, GoogleNet, ResNet and Inception models to see if the existing uh, state-of-the-art models would be suitable for this application. We also created a data set of real-world images to test against so we used a lightbox environment and mimicked the same environment that we used to render in Blender, the, the surrogate model ones. So we're looking to see if the CNNs can focus solely on the features of the models and not be perturbed by any noise of any background, of any background features uh, in the scenery. So our results, when we were comparing CNNs, we found that GoogleNet and Res uh, AlexNet were the most accurate for our use case, whilst ResNet and Inception uh, did not perform uh, as well. So it does highlight that you know we have to be careful of which CNNs we choose to apply, and it's always worth evaluating a few against our use case. We looked at the effect of augmentation on the predictive power of the CNN. So this is a way of using low computationally expensive uh, procedures such as rotating, reflecting and scaling of the renders to enhance our data set to, that the CNN is trained on and with the aim of increasing its accuracy. And we did manage to see that in our use case. So we can see that actually we could probably get away with using less renders, um, so be less computation, computationally expensive, but still achieve the same predictive power. We looked at the effect of reduction on the predictive power of the CNN and we were surprised to see that actually we could reduce our CN, uh, data set that we used to train the CNN on by up to 80% and yet still achieve an 85% accurate um, prediction of the model that someone has taken a photo of. So that was really promising that we could actually really reduce the number of renders taken per model in that CAD model repository. And that's really important given that we were thinking of, you know, potentially rendering up to a million different CAD models. We also looked at the confusion matrices. This is what the CNN confuses different items for uh, when, when predicting its class. And actually what we found is that we saw that this was a non-uniform behaviour. So we could actually identify there were clusters of objects being uh, confused with one another. Whilst you know, for CNN that's confusion, maybe for design that's a sign of similarity. And we are now continuing our work in analysing that further. 
So just a couple of concluding remarks that uh, CNNs trained on surrogate models can be used to distinguish objects in real world photos and that off the shelf CNNs perform well so no need to start with a blank slate but we do have to test a number to, uh, before uh, confirming which one to take forward. Augmentation and actually reducing the number of red renders didn't hamper, a, a, augmentation increased the performance and reduced the number of renders didn't hamper, hamper the performance uh, of the CNN. So we can actually get away with fewer renders but using augmentation to increase the accuracy of the CNN. And confusion matrices show a non-uniform confusion leading to the possibility that CNNs can be used to cluster CAD objects in some way or manner. So as the DMF lab, we are continuing uh, to research into these and how they can support engineering design. And we're keen to collaborate with anyone who has any ideas for CNNs. Um, we've had you know, a few years of experience with them now. So please t check us out at dmflab.co.uk. So thank you for your attention. I look forward to hearing your questions.